everyone welcome to a new session on informatics and introduction to bioinformatics here we discuss secondary databases the high throughput research projects have generated an explosive growth in the availability of biological data that makes the maintaining of these data difficult today biology is a data rich science where each researcher experiment produce huge amount of data we can no longer analyze or handle all this data manually we need powerful data analysis tools to help us interpret and understand the significance of this data biological databases offer data storage facility and various tools which help understand and analyze the data a database is a collection of structured searchable and up to date data in bioinformatics there are literally hundreds of public free accessible databases the data are usually deposited in databases and assigned a unique identifying number for quotation in publications biological data may be connected and these connections are essential for comprehension and discovery a nucleotide sequence is linked to a protein it codes for nucleotide sequences are grouped into genes a gene may code for one protein several proteins or none at all this protein might have different names in different species a protein belongs to protein family and it must be linked to its evolutionary progeny we would also like to have links to scientific publications related to our protein find out methods and instruments used for its discovery and even the parameters of the instrument used researchers frequently repeat experiments conducted by others to verify and improve their process different secondary databases are explained in detail secondary databases firstly let us study about secondary nucleotide sequence repository most of the secondary databases are the sub collection of sequences retrieved from the primary databases like genbank or embl some of the secondary databases are just like primary database but with the addition of annotation software presentation of the information and cross references some other secondary databases do not contain any sequences but the information gathered from different databases let us study some of the examples for the secondary nucleotide sequence database the berkeley drosophila genome project or bdgp or flybase is a consortium that sequenced the entire genome of the fruit fly drosophila melanogaster to a high degree of completeness and quality the berkeley drosophila genome project or bdgp genome gene disruption project generates single p element insertion strains of those mutated unique genomic open reading frames such strains strongly facilitate further genetic and molecular studies of the disrupted loci but it has remained unclear if p elements can be used to mutate all drosophila genes asdb is another database which has originally developed for the c elegans or nematode worm genome project This repository contains the sequence, genetic map and also the phenotypic information about Cynorhabditis elegans. The very flexible schema notation of ASDB allows the user to modify and extend the data relationship very easily by simply editing the model flies. The Institute for Genomic Research or TIGR at www.tigr.org contains all the focus on one organism it contains the sequence and annotation of the completed genomes associated information about the organism such as taxon and gram stain pattern the structure and composition of their dna molecules and the information about the protein sequence derived from that dna molecule from october 2006 tigr has become a multidisciplinary genomic focused organization with the center for advancement of genomics or tcag the craig venter science foundation the joint technology center 
and the Institute for Biological Energy Alternatives IBEA and is known as the J. Craig Venter Institute. Genomes of mitochondria and other such organelles are available at the Organelle Genome Database developed by University of Montreal, Canada and is known as GoBase from the website gobase.bcm.umontreal.ca. Secondary Amino Acid Sequence Repository or GPCRGB. GPCRDB is a database focused on transmembrane protein which is used by the cells to communicate with the outside world. This database contains multiple sequence alignment, ligand and ligand binding data, 3D models, mutation data, literature reference, disease patterns, cell lines, protocols, vectors, etc. The GPCRDB is designed to act as a data storage medium as well as a tool to aid biomedical scientists with answering questions by offering a single point of access to many types of data that are integrated and visualized in a user friendly way. Cluster The cluster is a database offers an automatic classification of the entries in Swissprot and TREMBL database into groups of related proteins. The protein families are clustered on the basis of or pairwise comparisons between protein sequences. The clustering is based on the pairwise comparison between protein sequences. The database is connected to Interpro which helps to integrate the information on protein families, domains and functional sites from ProSite, Prints, PFAM and ProDOM. It has also links to the Interpro graphical interface that allow users to see at a glance whether proteins from the cluster share particular functional sites. Cluster also provides cross references to HSSP and PDB. COGs COGs or cluster of orthologous groups of database is another database similar to cluster available online at www.ncbi.nlm.nih.gov slash COG. This is a database generated by comparing the predicted and known proteins in all completely sequenced microbial genomes to infer sets of orthologs. Each COG consists of a group of proteins found to be orthologous across at least three lineages and likely corresponds to an ancient conserved domain. Recently, the eukaryotic orthologous groups or KOGs and egg NOG have been added to the COG database, which provides an extended analysis of more genomes including eukaryotes. The main COG's web page contain the following principal features. A. A list of all COGs organized by the predicted functional category. B. Separate list of COGs for each functional category and for a variety of major pathways and functional systems. C. A table of co-occurrences of genomes in COGs. D. A list of COGs organized by phyletic patterns. E the phyletic pattern search tool, F the COG Knitter program, G a search engine to search COGs for gene names, COG numbers and arbitrary text, H help which covers the principal subjects related to COGs. ProSite ProSite is a pattern database available online at prosite.expressy.com dot org contains protein motifs and patterns which are encoded as regular expressions. It is a method of determining the function of uncharacterized proteins translated from genomic or cDNA sequences. It consists of a database of biologically significant sites and patterns formulated with appropriate computational tools that can reliably identify the family of protein of the new sequence. 
the entry in prosite is divided as two part that is pattern and the related text. The regular expression is placed in the same format as Swiss prot with a two letter identifier at the beginning of each line to show the corresponding type of information. Each entry contains the reference and the link to all the protein that have the same pattern. The related text is given as a documentation file with the accession number which makes the connection to the expression data. Prints. Prints is another database for protein sequence patterns and are stored as fingerprints. Each fingerprint is a set of patterns or motifs. The entry in this database can be divided as three sections. First section contains the entry name, accession number, number of motifs and cross links to other databases. Second section is a table that contains the set of motifs that make up each fingerprint. The last section contains the actual fingerprints and is stored as multiply aligned sequences. Prodom or protein domain database. Prodom is another database that contains homologous domains automatically generated by comparing all available protein sequences. The comparison and the clustering is performed using the program PSI BLAST. Prodom features are being discussed which is taken from the website documentation. This is the result obtained from a protein domain database after homology comparison between two or more proteins. Here you can see the most frequent protein names which have been given and also it compares the ATP binding transporter proteins of different organisms. Here we can also see about the alignment length, the number of domains in each family, the consistency indicator and also the database comments. Let us now study about the each icon which is present in the pro domain database. The first icon is the motif representation. This motif is a graphic representation of this family. Several families have a motif representation consistent throughout the whole database. Second, we move on to the graphic representation. Graphic representation of all proteins in this domain with the decomposition in domains. The third icon as you can see is the list of prodom families which are related to the current family. Related means that there are far homologies between them. This button is not drawn if the family is not related to any other one or for the families with poor alignment or homogeneity norm MD values low. The next icon you see is prodom SG. If no PDB links are found for this family or its related families and if this family satisfies several quality checks then this family could be a good candidate for structural determination. If present you can click the button for more information prodom CG. When in prodom Use this button to access the corresponding prodom CG family if it exists. When in prodom CG, use it to access the corresponding prodom family which should always exist. The next icon is MSF. To retrieve the prodom family in MSF format, FASTA icon. This icon is used to retrieve the prodom family in FASTA format. RIME DDDTA. This icon is used to compute a profile using PSI BLAST against this family. You should be careful to retrieve the binary file. Unfortunately, this will not work on every architecture. This functionality is still under experimental conditions. The NORM D icon. The NORM D value is computed for every prodom family. If this stamp is displayed then the norm D may be considered as high that is greater than 0.4 meaning the alignment is of good quality. The next icon you see is predict protein. To access the predict protein server through a pre-filmed form. The next icon you see is ESP. 
ESP icon is used to print a high quality representation of this family. Strap. Strap is used to see the alignment and phylogenetic tree of this family based on structure. Lastly, you see the printer icon. This is used to just print the result obtained. PFAM. PFAM is another database that contains all the important collection of information available in the world for classifying proteins. The database is developed at the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute. The aim of the database is to develop a comprehensive classification of all known protein sequences and it is the largest collection of protein domain families. Each family is represented by multiple sequence alignments and hidden Markov models or HMMs. PFAM families contain two levels of quality, PFAM A and PFAM B. PFAM A entries are derived from the PFAM sequence database which is built from the most recent release of Uniprot KB at a given time point. Each PFAM A family consists of a curated seed alignment which contains a small set of representative members of that family, profile of the HMM's model built from the seed alignment and an automatically generated full alignment which contains all detectable protein sequences belonging to the family as defined by profile HMM searches of primary sequence databases. PFAM B families are unannotated and of lower quality as they are generated automatically from the non-redented clusters of the latest automatic domain decomposition algorithm ADDA release. PFAM B families can be used to identify the functionally conserved regions when there are no PFAM A entries found. An example query in terms of the protein for the protein VAV human has been discussed. The same way the query can be in terms of family name, accession number, sequence ID, etc. Secondary structure database SCOP and CAT H. SCOP The structural classification of proteins or SCOP contains the classification of proteins to family, superfamily, and the fold and is available online at http.scop.mrclmb.cam.ac.uk slash scop. The SCOP database aims to provide a detailed and comprehensive description of the structural and evolutionary relationships between all proteins whose structure is known, including all entries in the protein data bank. Each entry has functionally annotated information as well as links to other databases. Family level provides the clustered protein families which are clearly evolutionarily related. Generally, this shows a 30 percent and greater identity between proteins. However, in some cases, similar functions and structures provide definitive evidence of common descent in the absence of high sequence identity. For example, many globins form a family, though some members have sequence identities of only 15 percent. Superfamily level is for the proteins that may have common evolutionary origin. In other words, the proteins whose structural and functional features suggest that a common evolutionary origin is probable, even though it has a low sequence identity are placed together in superfamilies. For example, actin, the ATPase domain of the heat shock protein and hexakinase together form a superfamily. The fold level is based on the similarity between the protein structures. Proteins are defined as having a common fold if they have the same major secondary structures in the same arrangement and with the same topological connections. Proteins placed together in the same fold category because of the structural similarities arised from the packing arrangements and chain topologies and it may not have a common evolutionary origin. CAT H. CAT H is class, architecture, topology and homologous superfamily available online at 
www.cathdb.info. The name itself shows the classification hierarchy of the database. The structures are the subset of PDB which has high degree accuracy. CATH contains 26 million protein domains which are classified into 2738 superfamilies. The entries in CATH is divided in three CATH superfamilies, CATH domains and PDB structures. CATH superfamily group protein domains into superfamilies when there is sufficient evidence for diverge of a common ancestor. CATH domain is a distinct and compact unit of protein structure. PDB structure provides the 3D coordinates of atoms present in a protein. Other databases. There are more databases other than primary and secondary databases. These databases are called composite databases. Composite databases aim to amalgamate the information held in two or more of the primary databases. This means that you can search one composite database rather than do multiple searches on individual primary databases. Let us now see the various examples for composite databases. First one, OWL. OWL is a composite protein sequence database which is a combination of Swissprot, PIR, GenBank and NRL3D. The most priority one is Swissprot and all other databases get compared with Swissprot to remove the identical entries and the entry different from Swissprot are the only information taking from the other three datasets. Second is NRDB. NRDB is a non-redundant database with a collection of Swissprot and TREMBL. The database contains similar information as OWL but contains more up-to-date information. However, strictly speaking, it is not non-redundant but non-identical. That is, only identical sequence copies are removed from the database. As a result, NRDB is larger and less efficient to search than OWL. To be rigorous, it is sensible to search NRDB, but for the purposes of short information, it is more practical to search OWL. There are many other databases available these days and it is difficult to divide them to the correct category. Microarray datasets are widely available in Gene Expression Omnibus or GEO and Array Express are very useful to show any available data on the expression of a gene. If the gene codes for a protein, then UNIREF can be used to identify the UNIPROT proteins. A search of interpro will help classify the protein into a specific family and show any available domains. The use of a 2D page database such as Swiss 2D page provides us the direct information on the expression of the protein. If it does not code for a protein, then a search of the wide variety of non-coding RNA databases may yield more information. Fortunately, many of these databases contain cross-references to ease progression from one source of information to the next. Additionally, these days there are many useful integration tools and databases to help the users. Integrated databases are more easy to use as they provide a quick one-stop access to a variety of different type of information, a base for more detailed searches, a place for small or specialty databases to gain exposure to a wide variety of users and an opportunity for complementary databases to learn more about and collaborate with each other. Integrate is an example for integrated database. Improvements to data access require strong collaborations cross-referencing and integration if the amount of available data is not to overwhelm the use. There exists a database called Database of Biological Database DBD that contains all the available database links and details in it. So it is easy to use this database to find the suitable database for our search and is available online at www.dbd.com. BioDBS.info
Let us now summarize what we have learnt in this session. The present challenge in the field of biology is to maintain a large volume of data such as the ones generated in the areas like genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, microarray gene expression, phylogenetics, etc. Improvements of these data require strong collaborations, cross-referencing and integration if the amount of available data is not to overwhelm the user. Common data standards allows both distributors and collaborators to work on a single project transparently from anywhere in the world. Hence, in the field of research, the importance of databases is increasing day by day. And there is no doubt that these bioinformatics databases will have a significant impact in biological sciences and betterment of human lives. Here are a few questions for you to work out. 1. Get the protein sequence of the human hemoglobin using a secondary database. 2. Retrieve the details of the protein actin using SCOP and CATH. 3. Compare the protein structures of human alpha amylase and barley alpha amylase. 4. Find the details about the database DBD. 5. Find more about the database NBD. Here I suggest a few books and websites for your further study. Fundamentals of Bioinformatics written by Harisha S. International Publishing House Private Limited 2007. Bioinformatics an Introduction written by Ramsten J. Published by Springer in 2004. Bioinformatics and Functional Genomics written by Pevsner J. Published by Wiley 2013. Bioinformatics a Practical Approach written by Xu Qing Yi. Published by Taylor and Francis in 2007. Textbook of Bioinformatics written by Sharma V. Published by Global Media Publications in 2008. Exploring Bioinformatics written by Claire C. S. and Visk J. E. Published by Jones and Bartlett Learning 2013. Bioinformatics A Practical Guide to the Analysis of Genes and Proteins written by Andreas D. Baxi Vanis B. and F. Francis. Published by John Wiley and Sons. Volume 43, 2001, second edition. Bioinformatics, Tools and Applications, written by Edwards D., J. Statch and D. Hansen, published by Springer in 2009. Here I suggest a few websites for your further reference. www.fruitfly.org, www.acedb.org, www.tigr.org, gobase.bcm.umontreal.ca, www.gpcr.org, www.ncbi.nlm.nih.gov/cog, prosite.expressy.org, www.bioinf.manchester.ac.uk slash tb browser slash prints www.scop.mrclmb.cam.ac.uk slash scop www.cathdb.info Thank you for watching this session. We will meet in the next session with a new topic. Till then, bye.